Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about all the houseplant things. But today we are talking about all the garden and landscape things. So we're gonna be outside today, probably most of the day just working on some stuff that I've got going on out there. I'm working on a new like flower bed situation or a couple of them. But big thank you to Waterdrop for sponsoring this video and keeping me hydrated. I will be talking more about them a little bit later. But yeah, it's pretty chilly in my house. Like we keep it a crisp like 71, 72 in here. Um, which is kind of funny considering like growing up in Arizona, it's way too expensive to keep your house that cold. So growing up and like in my college house, it was like 77, 76 if it was really hot and we really needed a little extra. Anyway, I just walked outside to get like that, that nice feeling of warm air after you've been in an air conditioned place. And it was not like, it, I didn't get that feeling. You know what I mean? So like, I think it's like in the 90s today, but it just doesn't feel that hot to me. Ah, it is so hot. Actually, let's see. What is Miss Weather up to today? Oh, it's 84 degrees. That's like not even that bad. Okay, before we officially come out here, I wanted to show you what I did yesterday. So this was an afternoon project. It's not complete, obviously, but we're gonna finish it today. So as you can see, I have these pavers that I laid down and I can't tell you how proud I am <laughs> that I was able to accomplish this <laughs> um, and the reason being I have I've, I've talked about this a lot but I have really heavy clay soil and it is so hard like so hard to dig in it and plant things so um, anyway, basically when it comes to clay soil, you want to build or dig a hole, not like this, but kind of a wider, shallower hole. That's some advice that I got from a local place. And so I did that with all of these plants on the side here. I'm finally planting these. These actually came out of those planters. I had that last year. And then I have some Lyropi, which basically looks like an outdoor spider plant. And then I have some Brunera which this is a pretty leaf off of her. They look a little rough, but again, that will all go away and come back brand new and fresh next year. As you can see, she's super cute. Um, and I just have like a pattern of that. Whoa. And I had to stop the plants because the gate swings out and I don't want anybody to get hit by the gate. We don't open it super often, but you know, just in case we need to, uh, we have that option. But anyway, <sighs> I just realized that I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that bench out of that area now that I've done this. Oh, that's an interesting situation I've put myself in. Okay, well, pretty much this whole area is, as you can see, pretty full shade. And so I decided that I'm just going to mulch right here and leave it at that. I'm going to fill in with soil and all of the little bits because I had to dig out a trench for these tiles which again was hell it was horrible I really considered filming but it was so bad I, and I'm glad I didn't because that would have been like even more stress <laughs> it took like two days just to do this small section I, I envy anybody who doesn't have clay because it's just so hard anyway plus there's a lot of roots from this tree which is a whole other thing. So enough complaining. I'm just explaining that why I didn't film it anyway. So yeah, we're going to fill in with soil in the cracks and then mulch and this area will be complete. And then I can put that bench back over here. And then we have a little seating area oasis. And then I have all of these that I still need to plant. And I really want to get them in the ground because they're not, I just don't think they're going to survive like, the winter in their pots and why would I do that? I have an oak leaf hydrangea that I bought last year that I still have not planted and somehow it has survived in the pot. And I kind of want to take out this rose and put it there. And you guys, this is so annoying of me, but I planted all these roses last year. Well, some of them, there was already two rose bushes in here. And you, you know that this flower bed is literally the bane of my existence. And I think that I just need plants that are going to get really big in here. So I'm thinking of like hydrangea, although these hydrangea aren't doing so hot. It might be because they don't have a lot of sunlight. I don't really know. Like they're, they look okay, 
but they definitely don't look as good as they could, I'm sure. Maybe I pruned them incorrectly. Honestly, I don't know, but they bloomed finally and I feel better about it. But yeah, I was thinking maybe like a big hydrangea situation in here. I don't know, we're not gonna get to that in this video, but I'm just brainstorming because there's so much empty space and there's so many opportunities for weeds to come up and it's just, I'm sick of looking at this. I talk about it in like every garden video, whatever. <laughs> Oh, on a positive note, we have some fiddle leaf fig uh, leaves coming out from her, Miss Miss Fiddle. I've actually been considering chopping it like right here to promote some branching because it's pretty tall. I mean, it's about as tall as me. And I think that it could definitely do some branching soon. Maybe after these leaves. I'll, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Anyway, that's all I have to update for out here for now. But we are going to be finishing this area up. And then I have a garden bed up by the garden that I would really like to do, but I need to fix the weed whacker before I can tackle that. Before we truly get started, I need to prepare my water bottle because even though it doesn't feel all that hot, it's important to stay hydrated. And if you didn't know this about me, I am a dehydrated girly. I am always dehydrated. I'm just really bad at remembering to drink water. And I feel like if I make it fun, I'm better at remembering. And so that's why I'm really glad that I'm working with Water Drop for this video. So first of all, I've got this really beautiful glass water bottle from them. It has a little cover too, to keep it protected. But if you've never had water out of a glass water bottle, I really highly suggest it. So if you don't know what Water Drop is, it's basically a water enhancer. So you put these things called micro drinks in your water. It's 100% sugar-free, gluten-free, and vegan. And what you do is you just take off the little cover, you put it in your water, and then you fill this with water. <laughs> I'll be right back. You guys, as I'm filling this up, I can like smell the watermelon. So this is their limited edition flavor. It's called Breeze. They describe it as sun-kissed watermelon meets refreshing cucumber. And honestly, that sounds amazing. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure where the tablet went, but it's around here somewhere. I saw it floating. Okay, it's, it's, it's almost done. I'm really excited to try this. But anyway, <laughs> by choosing Water Drop, you're saving up to 98% plastic and CO2 compared to a single-use plastic bottle. And they collect and recycle one ocean-bound plastic bottle per micro drink pack sold. And as a result of that, they extract four times more plastic than they use. Ooh, that smells really good. It smells like an infused water, like when you put yummy fruits in your water. I'm ready to try it. That's good. Mmm. Definitely tastes like infused water, like it's very subtle but that's really good, I like it. Very refreshing. The deal that they have going right now is that if you spend $30, you will get a pack of their Breeze Micro Drink for free. You can use my code Becca Breeze to make that happen. And if you are interested in giveaways and hot air balloon rides, <laughs> um, Water Drop is doing a giveaway on their Instagram where you can win a hot air balloon ride, which is pretty cool. And I would love to do that someday. So anyway, thank you so much to Water Drop for keeping me hydrated. And let's go get this gardening stuff done. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, golden, I'll follow only golden, 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 golden things. Mountain laurel high fives for miles in spring. Rainbow trout and hummingbird.
Okay, you guys, the area is done. And honestly, I feel super proud of this. I really don't know how well you can see it because like based on what I'm seeing through the viewfinder, it doesn't look that clear because it is like dappled shade, but it looks really good. And I love having this bench here. I think it's really cute. Um, let me show you from this angle. Well, you've been looking at it, right? So we've got the stepping stones and then it's just covered with mulch. Is this a perfect job? No. <laughs> Could it be better? Probably. But I am really happy with it as it is. And for, before anyone says anything, I like that it's kind of crowded. You know, this is not a path that we walk like really ever. The, the only way that I ever even come through here is to come sit on this bench. So through traffic in here, it's not really a thing unless you're a maintenance person like spraying our yard for bugs which it doesn't happen that often so i think it's cute it'll be just perfect and it just adds a little something it's a little shade garden you know i feel like i could maybe add some like hostas host over here maybe like some more stuff right here i do think that would be weird if there was just like plants right here and here but like nothing in there but it really is just because the gate swings. Um, and it can't swing like all that much because the um, the bench is there. You can at least open it to swing through or to squeeze through. But anyway, um, next up that I'm gonna have to figure out eventually is we have all these pavers that I ripped out from the previous owner. Half of these were buried and I like found them accidentally at another point when I was working on this so that I might just give those away for free on Facebook or maybe use them in the garden area like as a little paved walkway underneath the rock who knows miss oak leaf hydrangea needs something to be done with that but I haven't decided fully yet <sighs> and with that I think that we're done with this area and it's time to move up to the garden which I feel like I should have done the garden part first because this is completely shaded and it's like actually kind of nice to be out here. <laughs> ah, so we're going out to full sun. We're gonna be okay, we can do this. Okay, we have fixed up, and by we, I mean me. We're using the royal we here. <laughs> but I fixed up this area for probably the third time, the third and last time, and now I'm actually going to cut the wood and add on the garden bed, and then throw some soil in it, put some plants in the soil, and then freaking hope for the best. We just, yeah. I don't know. I, I was thinking like, oh, well, I'll plant this and this and like make a design. But now I'm kind of thinking, what if I just want chaos? Because I tried to go for a design with this one. And well, you can see how well that worked out for me. The wood's been sitting out here for like a really long time. And I'm just happy to be getting this freaking done. And honestly, it feels hot, but there's like a light breeze. It's not so bad, really, at the end of the day. I probably should put on some sunscreen. I should have done that to begin with, but I didn't initially because I was in the shade. But now I'm in the sun, so I'm gonna put on some SPF and then I'm gonna trim some wood and we're gonna freaking do this garden bed.
let me be the first to say, this is a horrible garden bed. <laughs> the only thing that's right about it is like the length of the wood. Other than that, it's bad. Please don't use this as an example, but it just needs to get done. And I feel like when there's enough plants growing in it, you're not really gonna be able to tell. <laughs> that's my hope. Let's add some soil. Treat your eyes, yeah. Okay, friends. Whew. <sighs> it is so hot. We, we got the full heat now. And um, not to complain about the weather or talk about it in much of the video, but I just wanted to give you an update that um, the garden bed is gonna need probably six more bags of soil, which I did not expect. I kind of forgot how much soil those take because the last one, the other one, I filled up with the... <sighs> I filled it up with the tractor situation. So I just, I guess I didn't have a gauge on how much soil it needed. Anyway, um, I am not equipped to finish that today. Number one, it's hot. Number two, I'd have to go back to the store and get more soil, and I just don't want to do that. So you can see what it will look like, and I'm going to plant the flowers, maybe in a video, maybe not in a video. So this is one of those videos that's like between projects. You know, I showed you the end of one project and the beginning of another, but I've been trying to get out and do stuff like this because at the beginning of the summer, I made this really long list of things that I wanted to get done. And it was looking like it wasn't gonna happen because all of that was in addition to the greenhouse. And like all these little projects, I can do them by myself for the most part. I mean, yeah, I, I can do them by myself. So it didn't feel like too big of a deal. Like it's not really taking away from the greenhouse because a lot of the stuff with the greenhouse, I can't do by myself. But I did buy the cement and some bolts to um, bolt the foundation into those cement blocks. So hopefully that will get done when I get back. I'm actually going out of town for Labor Day weekend to California and I'm super excited. But um, when I get back home, I'm really going to be wrapping up all of my projects probably. Like the greenhouse will be wrapped up. The garden, I'm going to you know, figure out my fall crops and probably start direct sowing some stuff um, on covered rows because everything that I pretty much want to grow for the winter time is going to be stuff that are not winter but like fall and winter all of that stuff I have had zero luck growing because the bugs get to it so I'm gonna do closed rows for those and I just don't know um, probably I'm gonna do the corn row because the corn will be able to come out pretty soon hopefully um, and then also the watermelon row. So we'll just have to see what I'm able to do, but I'll probably start sowing shade crops pretty soon or fall crops pretty soon. And I will take you along on that journey because I really wanna grow broccoli and just like a bunch of lettuce. And then I really want to sow some herbs to grow inside for the winter time because I have a few different grow light situations where I can do that. So probably we'll switch it out and see which one works best, but just in general, try to keep growing food through the winter. And then in the greenhouse, I'm going to be growing for sure tomatoes. And I'm gonna try to do peas in the garden but if I can't, I'm just gonna grow them in the greenhouse because I don't think that those need to be pollinated because I've seen Laura from Garden Answer grow snap peas in her greenhouse over the winter or like early, early spring. So we'll see if I'm even able to do it. I don't know if I will because of like the daylight time, but if I can't, I might put a grow light in there because I'm gonna have electricity. But that's something that's exciting is on September 6th, I'm having an electrician come out and what we decided to do with electricity is Daniel has experience with electricity just 
by trade with his job. So what we're going to do is because of that, we're gonna take advantage of that and try to save some money. And so with all the quotes that we got, it was around $2,600. With this guy that we talked to, we actually called an electrician in like a small town outside of Columbia, which Daniel told me to do from the start, but I was like, let's not. And finally I just did it and he was really great to like help. And I don't know if it's like small town people or if I got lucky, but he was like super willing to like like find a way to make it work for us cost wise because it is a really big expense to put electricity out in the greenhouse and it's something that we have to do so basically we're going to be saving like a thousand dollars because we were going to have to dig the trench anyway so the guy was like since you're digging the trench why don't you just also lay down the wire and then i will come out tell you what to do you do the work and then i'll come back and make all the final connections and we were like that's great. We're totally happy with that because it'll be like to code because he's going to make sure it's all correct, but we don't have to pay for him to like lay the wire and pay for labor for two people in addition to the materials. So if you are at all familiar with electrical work and you feel comfortable doing that, I would suggest maybe trying to work something like that out with a local electrician if you can. But once the electricity is out here, it's going to be super cool. I can actually probably start yeah I can actually start growing stuff in there because then we'll be able to hook up the exhaust fan and all of that so anyway lots of really fun stuff is happening and the summer is sort of like buttoning up really nicely there is one other area that I would really like to tackle before the season ends and that's a garden bed that I was starting like sort of near my driveway which I don't think you guys have seen at all like if ever I don't ever show that part of my property when that's done I will probably show you what it looks like but I have some plants that I already have that I'm gonna put in that spot I think I figured out a way to do the garden border like the, the border of the garden box in a way that makes sense for me because what I wanted to do initially was um, stones or bricks and those are super heavy to like it's heavy and it's tedious number one two or number one and number two to load them in the truck take them out of the truck lay them all in the right places like it's just a lot for one person it's a lot of like backbreaking work which like i'm happy to work by myself but when it's that kind of stuff it's a little hard and like if i have daniel available to help me I'm going to opt for the greenhouse or something, you know, that's a little bit more important. So I decided I'm just going to do wood similar to these garden beds, but it'll probably be two, two by sixes high. So it'll be um, 12 inches tall, a foot tall. And I'm going to put probably some hardy hibiscus out there, the sedum that I bought a while ago, the cone flowers. So like everything that's left in the wagon is probably going to go out there. Um, because it's a pretty sunny spot, but it also gets some pretty good shade throughout the day just because there's a lot of trees around it. So I'll show you that when it's all done. I guess I could tell you a little bit about my garden harvest this year just really quickly. It has not been a good year for the garden, but um, I've heard from a lot of other people the same thing. Like it just was, it got really hot really fast and it stayed really hot and we didn't have a ton of rain this season. So it just wasn't really good for anybody, which does make me feel so much better. But I do feel like I was able to implement all my lessons from last year and I, I did get so much better for this year, but I have even more that I've learned this year just by having an off year and like having more experience with certain crops. Like for example, my cherry tomatoes, I've been able to pick like maybe 20 and I have two huge plants. So I really should have had like triple or quadruple that amount and I think it's because I didn't do any sort of pruning because last year I grew a different type of cherry tomato and I didn't have to prune it at all like it stayed a pretty good size pretty manageable size let's say my cantaloupe has some sort of pest and I don't know what it is but it's something like laying eggs and I've been trying to blast them off but the plant is doing okay even though that's happening and I'm also thinking like it's close to the end of the season I don't know if I really care that much which is kind of sad because I love cantaloupe but I was able to harvest one I could have harvested like probably five or six but there's an animal getting into my garden and a bunch of people are telling me to set up a camera so I know where they're coming in from and I just keep forgetting to put it out there and to be honest I'm kind of losing steam I don't know if I really care anymore at this point which I know is not like that kind of sucks but 
at the same time I'm just like tired and it's really hot it's been so hot and it just like isn't a very desirable season for it but this year I grew peppers I grew bell peppers and those were really awesome like through the heat they did so good Roma tomatoes were also so good the plant stayed like a pretty good size I don't think you're even supposed to prune Roma tomatoes but correct me if I'm wrong I don't want to like say the wrong thing here but I think with certain tomatoes you're not supposed to prune them because it sort of ruins like how they grow but with the cherry tomato that I have like there's no way that you're not supposed to prune that like I definitely should have been pruning it and it just completely got away from me flowers didn't really happen for me this year which sucks besides like what's up by my front door but I do have to say that between last year and this year I feel so much more like I know what I'm doing this year which is great because I I have a year under my belt and it just makes me so happy to think about next year and how much better I'm gonna be next year and um, just like all the things I can work on next year like I think up by my front door the curb appeal has gotten so much better because when we first moved here it was pretty bleak like it wasn't it you could tell that no one had like truly loved this property in a really long time and so I'm so glad that Daniel and I were the people to like love it in the way that it deserves and you know who knows that this is our forever home but for now it's really really sweet I personally would love for this to be my forever home because I've really like dug my heels in and done a lot with the property if something somewhere else is better then maybe I would consider selling but honestly that just seems really sad to me like I I don't know if I'll be able to find something that feels better than this a difference you know if it would maybe a different state that would be nice I don't know if I love Missouri long term but yeah it's just been really fun to live here it's been a really great experience being able to like grow in this garden zone and like learn through all of you and anyway that's just my little not pep talk but just season in review really quickly because I am going to do a more in-depth you know what I learned in the garden my second year gardening video because I did my first year gardening and I feel like that video really fully encapsulates everything I learned if you didn't see it I'd say it was a pretty good video but um, I'm going to do it for year two and I'm and I'm gonna have a lot more to say and I'm super excited for that until then thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to check out water drop if you are you know a fellow dehydrated girly and you have a hard time drinking water it was really great to have this today I mean water out of glass amazing and um, the flavor was divine it was very subtle and delicious and it just made every time I drank my water an enjoyable experience as you can see See, my bottle is empty <laughs> so I actually need to refill because I'm feeling thirsty again I've been sweating a lot so don't want to get even more dehydrated than I already typically am as my baseline <laughs> so <laughs> thank you so much for watching you guys and I will see you in the next one bye